don't tell me I wasn't cooking, bro. Because scientifically, scientifically, that would mean every bite is a perfect bite. That means Wendy's meat is made out of magical, magical, magical ingredients. <laughs> What did I do, man? Some of it is plant-based, but there sure does seem to be an awful lot of meat-based food under the sea. I think you know where I'm going with Wait, this. Wait, what? The Bikini Bottom citizens eat primitive fish. Haha, <laughs> it's not cannibalism if they're less evolved than you, right? There's no moral dilemma there. Technically, fish eat fish in real life, which is true, but I still think it's, uh, a, it's a touchy subject in Bikini Bottom. Look up quasi-gummy-chewy kit. Candy fish? Wait, what? You do that. Playing with a convicted felon, and we know he's violated his parole somehow. You might as well confess, Dale. Hey, man, I haven't done nothing. Oh, yeah? What have you got in there? Hmm, quasi gummy, chewy candy fish. Is this how you have fun? By eating your own kind? Scum like you make me sick. Cuff him. What does that prove, though? This is just a. It's just gummy fish. What does this prove, though? This is, is this candy fish? Is, it, well, actually, no. Now that I think about it. Wait, no. Wait, hold on. Wait, now that I think about it, though. Cause how the fuck are they making the gummy fish? Cause gum, regular gummy shit is made out of cartilage. Are they making? Hey, I might have lied to that man. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm kind of we we are now officially we are now officially in the depths the depths of the theories, bro. Nah, that's actually fucking. Oh, hell no. I mean, what the fuck else are they gonna eat? Sand? In season three, episode 13, we see direct proof of this when the characters go fishing for primitive clams. This is something completely normal in this world. And then there's the chum bucket, which sells chum. Yeah. Chum. Chum is- Which is fish. So everybody here is cannibals. Literally just ground up fish. The show isn't even hiding this. Now, we don't really see too much of the meat harvesting side of Bikini Bottom, and I'm not surprised they're keeping it on the DL, you know, with the whole- Wait, but don't they have- don't they have sea cows, though? Because they have sea bears. And sea horses. I'm pretty sure they have sea cows. I'm pretty sure. They had some type of sea cow in some episode. Thing, but there is one secret to making food that is kept more secret than anything in Bikini Bottom. The best kept secret in the entire show. You already know what I'm going to say. The Krabby Patty secret, secret formula. formula. Throughout yep. the show, there's been lots of contradictory evidence about the Krabby Patty secret formula. Yep. In season 4, episode 7, Mr. Krabs says it's an old family recipe. And this is where my Wendy's theory come in. Don't tell me I wasn't cooking, bro. Now, hear me out, right? Because Wendy was in Bikini Bottom. And maybe Wendy is Mr. Krabs' first girlfriend. And Wendy and Mr. Krabs and Plankton made the formula. And maybe she has the secret ingredients part of the part of the script and took it back up to the surface and maybe the secret ingredient is that the patties are square because scientifically scientifically that would mean every bite is a perfect bite 
Onto something. Hear me out. Hear me. Mother knows the Krabby Patty formula. Of course she does. Wait, what? It's an old Krabs family recipe. But in season five, episode one, yeah, Mr. Krab discovered it on his own by accidentally mixing random ingredients together. Wait, what? Hold on, run that back. Go to the Patrick Star Show, one episode, uh, season one, episode eight, Terra of two thousand, uh, twenty thousand leagues. At 4.42, there's some familiar insides of the witch cabinet. If, the, if this flashback is true, then there's something supernatural about the Krabby Patty. Mm. I don't see it. I mean, he said right here, it says, there's something similar inside the witch's cabinet. Hold on, let me, let me replay this one more time. Oh, he's talking about the ingredients. He's talking about the ingredients. But in season five, episode. It's the same bottle here, here. That is literally the same bottle. This is literally the same bottle. So this bottle got to be whatever the secret ingredient or whatever. It's the same bottle. Like, literally, it's the same bottle. Assuming this is like, I'm guessing some type of Halloween episode, and I'm guessing this is a, I'm guessing this is their ancestors. Wait, hold on, it's grandma. This granny tentacles. So does that mean Squidward's? If this is Squidward's. Family recipe? Wait, hold on. My wait, my mind is getting blown right now. Because if that's if that's wait, so this so did so did Graham so did so did so did, so did hold on hold on. So did Mr. Krabs' great grandmother stole the recipe from stole ingredients from Granny? Tentacles Pantry. So I'm assuming that whatever these bottles are right here are magic related. And this is probably the secret formula. It has to be. But why did she? She didn't grab this one, but she grabbed these two. And these are literally the same bottles as this one. Like, literally. Like, this one. This, this literally has a little fold right here. Wait, I'm not going to lie. This is actually kind of fire. But my thing is, though, is are these the same bottles? So did Mr. Krabs' grandma lie to him? Hold on. Mr. Krabs said he discovered it on his own by knocking these ingredients down. But these are the same ingredients that are right here. So are you telling me these ingredients that got mixed into the, to the shits, this bottle having the same indent as this one right here, something's not adding up. Mr. Krabs must have lied. There's no way it's just random. Especially when these are the same ingredients that she's literally putting in here. This ingredient and the Krabby Patty formula, these two are still consistent. So we know for a fact that these two bottles right here are in the Krabby Patty formula. Regardless. Because these are, both of these are still in, they're in the same shits. My mind is blown! So maybe this was the first iteration of the Krabby Patty formula. All right, so so nobody going so nobody so nobody going to say nothing about this. So nobody going to say nothing like this. Cuz what else what else could this be? They got the same formula.
this was this was a, this was the first iteration of the Krabby Patty formula. I don't care what anybody says. It has to be. It has to be. I'm about to break y'all mind in a second. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when Pat when Plankton? Every time Plankton steals the Krabby Patty, I think y'all know. You, 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 I think you know what I'm about to say, right? Every time this man Plankton steals the Krabby Patty. Ain't it kind of peculiar that like it can it's it's able to turn into different things? It turned into a helicopter. It turned into a car. That shit started hopping by himself with it without without him even be like you know what I'm saying? Mind control. Notice what she just did here. Like she's controlling them like it's a robot. Like they're robots. I know it's magic. Don't you find that kind of oddly peculiar? Don't you find that kind of oddly peculiar? So I'm assuming whatever these two bottles are in here must be something magical related. But there's no way they can be mass produced. Cause like, how the hell are they gonna get? Like, this is literally the same bottle that's the one that is in the bottle cap. Cause you're telling me this is piece of paper, right? The piece of paper is supposed to be folded. You telling me that's how they sell the package like that? There's no way. This has to be the same bottle that's in this in this episode here. Cause there's no way that there's no way this is like. So my only thing, my only thing is, what if there's only one batch of Krabby Patties, and the Krabby Patties are just spawning off that one batch of Krabby Patties, and maybe like they made like an endless amount of Krabby Patties, because there's no way that they're able to to be able to make make these Krabby Patties with the same ingredients all the time. This is right. You can't, you can't tell me this is just random when they're in multiple places. You can't tell me that. Because why does he have this bottle? Discovered it on his own by accidentally mixing random ingredients together. I've done it. I discovered the perfect. So the one batch just continues and get, and continues to make Krabby Patties. Sometimes it's a book. Sometimes it's a secret sauce. And any glimpse we get at the formula is just random nonsense. There is a ton of. So the patties are magical. They have to be. What if the Krabby Patties are sentient? Because you're telling me SpongeBob can make the pretty patties based off a of color, but they still taste they taste they taste like the color. How else can you explain that other than it being the the patties themselves being magical? Because it's still the same ingredients, but they're just different colors, and they're supposed to taste like the colors contradictory evidence out there, but I think this might all be intentional. In order to throw people off, Mr. Krabs has spread misinformation about the Krabby Patty formula. In fact, he's already done this in Season 3, Episode 18, by hiding a fake formula for Plankton to find that says he's the secret ingredient. Mixed together with the <laughs> that most is true. important ingredient of all, four heaping pounds of freshly ground Plankton? <laughs> And the contradictions aren't just inside the show. Even one of the SpongeBob crew members once said that Krabby Patties are vegetarian and contain no meat. But I've that has to be a lie.
always been a little suspicious about what the creators say. They've also said that they're not allowed to show fish as food, except they clearly do with but they chum, do. clam fishing, and all the many, many gags where fish turn into food. It's almost like they're not allowed by Nickelodeon to publicly acknowledge this because that could create a controversy, but they could still sneak this dark secret into the show. So what is- Which is kind of weird because how- So you can't show fish being food, but you can show other animals being food that's also existing in the universe? That doesn't make any sense. Sandy's a squirrel. She's a land animal. So that means you can't so you, that means showing other land animals as food is is okay, but fish on fish is bad? Make it make sense. True secret ingredient. Where does the meat really come from? It's strange. We never really see Mr. Krabs get the meat delivered or at least go out and That's true. get it. It's That's true. Like he has all the meat he needs stockpiled. That's true. Hmm. What primitive meat can Mr. Krabs have access to? Maybe he's been holding on to something from the war. Hmm. What could Mr. Krabs have killed during the war that he doesn't want anyone to find out about? Something big enough to supply him with meat for years without needing more. Hmm, I, what could Okay, I think we kind of did debunk that, though, because I think the endless Krabby Patty theory actually could make more sense in this. Because I don't think he would be using whale meat. Because he still has to form... We never seen SpongeBob form the meat. <laughs> that sounds crazy. But we never seen SpongeBob form the Krabby Patties, like make the actual Krabby, like the actual meat part of the Krabby Patty in the show ever. So. My theory still stands. And that also includes my theory about Wendy's being, being a part of the SpongeBob universe even makes more sense now. That means Wendy's meat is made out of magical 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 ingredients really gonna make me say it mr krabs is using pearl's dead mother's carcass to make krabby patties Woo! we did it yeah we solved the mystery <laughs> magical we whale meat <laughs> imagine ah, i'm not gonna oh, say much it's the mighty moby dollar moby dollar a direct reference to Moby Dick, a story about hunting a whale. Okay. Are you kidding me? And that is the evolution theory. Eugene Crabbe's aspirations mm. for money and greed have caused him to do terrible, terrible things. At least his love for Pearl seems to be real, so maybe there's some small amount of good in him. Nah, I don't believe that because if Pearl was born in 2002 and she's 22, but he, this happened during the war. That, 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 that still doesn't mesh, mesh up for me. Something's off about that. We need to know. Is Pearl really actually 22? Or is that just a lie? Because if that was also the case, why the fuck did SpongeBob take this grown-ass woman to the prom? And why is she still in high school if she's older than everybody there? Doesn't make any sense! And even though Pearl's mother probably provides tons of meat, eventually he's gonna run out and he'll have to face what he's done. Well, unless, of course, there's another whale he has access to. Wait, what? Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. Cracker no, 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 got no, no. an Mr. AR like that. he's shooting. He Pearl. He's not just raising up. her for Krabby Patty meat. Even right. Mr. Krabs isn't that much of a monster. From every side I've ever seen to the sweetest sound I've heard, I'd gladly give up everything for all the money. Uh, so we're just we're just gonna ignore the fact that there was a bird flying in water. He just killed this bird. Okay. And Mr. Krabs has teeth. Krabs don't have teeth. Huh. Baby, you got something in your nose. No. 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 Wait, what? Wait, did I miss something? Did I miss something? Alrighty then, that's the end of that theory. Just gonna end it here before there's any more dark plot twists. Okay, so a lot of people had issues with the Pearl's mother Krabby Patty theory. Yes. Specifically the realism and logic behind how just one whale could create enough Krabby Patty meat for so many years. But listen. I don't make these theories using real world logic. I try and use the show's own internal logic. True. I mean, but to be fair though, I feel like the whale meat, the magical whale meat would make more sense because regular whale meat wouldn't make sense because there's no way that that 
all that meat can last for a fucking, <laughs> this sounds crazy. How many seasons of SpongeBob? 25? 26 seasons? So you're telling me that that whale meat can last up to 26 seasons worth of episodes? Even when you properly store a whale meat, that shit can only last up to maybe at most a year and a half or two. And he had that meat since the war. He had that he had that meat since the war. So there's no way that that meat lasted even that long for him before he started the crabby the Cressy Crab. Because if he started the Cressy Crab in 1977, and this war happened between the 1940s to the 1950s. There's no way he was able to keep that, that meat there long enough for it to even, that wouldn't even make it, nah, that, yeah, so it, that meat has to be magical. Wait, that's going to sound crazy. Don't clip that. 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 Y'all know what I meant. Y'all know what I meant, bruh. Stop. But. If you want to bring real world logic into this and argue about how long whale meat would last, I think the real world actually supports my theory. When a whale dies in the real world ocean, it has a very profound effect on the environment. Entire yeah, marine sure. ecosystems will form around a decomposing whale corpse and scavengers can feed off of it for up to 50 years. This is a phenomenon called whale fall. And this explains why total chaos breaks out whenever Bikini Bottom runs out of Krabby Patties. The Krabby Patty is what ties us all together. And without it, it will be a complete breakdown of social order. Aren't you overreacting a bit? Welcome to the apocalypse, Mr. Squidward. What the fuck? Just like a real whale fall, the ecosystem of Bikini Bottom is completely dependent on it. Also, oh. uh, another YouTuber, Athena P, pointed out to me that there's this moment in a newer episode of the Patrick Star Show. This episode addresses Alex Bale's Krabby Patties are made from Pearl's mother theory pretty directly. I'm Eugene Krabs. Krabby <laughs> <laughs> Patties are made with whale oil. <gasps> you you leave my daughter out of this. Oh, no. What you mean, whale oil? Is Eugene Krabs using. Ah, oh, you nasty nigga. No wonder why you wanted to go on a panty rage. You, you, lock this nigga UG crabs up, bruh. So that's, uh, that, that's something. I mean, take that as you will. So yeah, I still think the Pearl's mother Krabby Patty theory is solid. It's at least better than that crab meat theory that people won't stop commenting about. Crab meat is crazy. Actually, you, you know what? I'm just going to quickly debunk that theory because I know people are still going to comment about it on this video. Crab Here's meat don't make sense. Extra bonus bonus mini theory just because this theory annoys me so much. Mm, get on him. With Sonic Son of a bitch! Limates do more than quench your thirst. Damn, a slush do sound fire right now. So, a lot of people think that Krabby Patties are actually made of crab meat. That wouldn't make any Mr. sense. Krabs is going around killing all the crabs in Bikini Bottom. <laughs> That'd be this crazy. Comment I will get for the Bro, Mr. Krabs knocking off all the crab... <laughs> all the other crabs is crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? Who do you think he is? is Itachi? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I'm doing this for the... I'm... I'm doing this for the... For... For... For Bikini Bottom. <laughs> like, no, bruh rest of my life it's crab meat <laughs> but what if itachi knocked off the uchiha clan and everybody he turned into was made 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 for the ramen meat or the ramen made 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 to be ramen Because we don't never see that man grab any other type of. We don't. We don't. We don't. See, we only see him make the noodles. We don't see him. See him put the meat inside the ramen. Where is he getting his meat from? Is the Leaf Village eating Uchiha meat? That's a theory within a theory.
crab? I mean, why else would Mr. Krabs be the only crab in Bikini Bottom? Uh, except for his mom and his dad yeah, yep. and his nephews. Yep. Okay, okay, but there's no crabs outside of his family except for this guy and this yep. doctor and yep. this kid and these yep. two crabs yep. and this circus guy. Yep. But, but besides them, there's no crabs in Bikini Bottom. Okay, even if there is not like a lot of crabs, there's equally not a lot of sponges or starfish true. or pufferfish or That's squirrels true. in Bikini Bottom. Bikini Bottom is like... Well, squirrels make sense until the, obviously the movie because then when the movie came out, we know that Sandy got literally like her mom, her dad. What was it? Her brother. She had two brothers and a sister, I think it was. And I think they and I think the one of the brothers have kids. So they got a lot of that. And apparently they're part of a, some secret organization or some shit. So who knows? 90% generic fish. But then why is it named the Krusty Krab? Uh, cause, cause the owner's a crab, yeah. and that's his last name. Yep. But even if we ignore that, it's like, wh wh why would Wait, this- Wait, is this his real address? Hold on. But then why is it named the Krusty Crab? Uh, cause, cause the owner's a crab, and that's his last- Mr. Krabs was born in, okay, Mr. Krabs was born in 1942. He was 30, he was 35. I'm assuming he went to the war around. If we apply real human, I guess, war, I guess, uh, logic here. When he was 18. So that would be around 1958, 1959, or no, it would be 1962, right? Somewhere around there. So between 1962, roughly. In 1977, he met Pearl's mom and theoretically killed Pearl's mom. So she's definitely not, Pearl was definitely not born in 2002. So she was born between 1962 and 1977. So either way, she is literally more than 10 years older than SpongeBob. And even if we apply well years, there will be no way SpongeBob will still, there will be no way she'll still be in high school by the time her and SpongeBob went to the prom. Uh, some weirdness going on there. Name, but even if we ignore that, it's like, wh wh why would Mr. Krabs advertise his dark secret as the name of his restaurant? True. But then why is the Krusty Krab shaped like a crab trap? Okay, this is actually the one good piece of evidence in this theory. What? I think it's a little ambiguous whether it's supposed to be a crab trap or a lobster trap. So I did some digging, and Patchy actually calls it a lobster trap in a SpongeBob DVD. Bonus. Oh shit! The Krusty Krab looks like a New England-style lobster trap, but now it just traps the pocket change of Bikini Bottom's hungry denizens. They also find a very similar-looking building in Camp Coral and call it a lobster trap. Oh no! We've walked into a real Life. I could maybe see this evidence kind of working, but you'd kind of expect if this was their secret intention, mm. they would like call it a crab trap, you know? But what about the scene where Mr. Mr. Crab eats one and he says, says that it tastes like him? 
So that's what I taste like. This is supposed <laughs> to be the smoking gun piece of evidence. That's all <laughs> so over that's what I seem like I taste. Nobody actually shows the clip with context. Mommy, my Krabby Patty tastes funny. Well, no wonder. It's all old and dried out, like that man right there. Now put that thing where it belongs, in the garbage. La, 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 Damn. La, la, la. Well, Damn, Mr. Crab got some. Two of a he got some length. We've both lost our luster. <laughs> So that's what, well, I, that's taste what like. I taste like. Mr. Crab says the patty tastes like him because the lady called the patty old, old. and dry yeah, like yeah. him. And he's been feeling insecure about his age. And the Wait, but why is it old and dry though? This episode. Like, I'm not saying the Pearl's mom theory is the best theory ever, but it's better than this shit. Come on. That's true. <laughs> The magical burger All can right. still be there, though. Evolution theory. I know I like to call each of. What could this even be about? In the season two episode, Survival of the Fittest, Sandy Sleep talks about fighting two infamous criminals named Dirty Dan and Pinhead. I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. For your dastardly deeds, Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. I'm your partner, Pinhead Larry. She later mistakes SpongeBob and Patrick for the criminal duo and attacks and even buries them alive with their own gravestones. <laughs> it's obviously an iconic episode, but I've always wondered who exactly were Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. All right, Pin. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Been swallowed up. Yo, this screenshot is crazy. <laughs> who exactly were Dirty Dan? No, no, this theory is not going to be about whether Dirty Dan or was Dan Schneider reference. There's never been any evidence it was, and that's not the type of theory I want to talk about. I don't even see how you would, I mean, I could see, I, I guess technically I could see how you could connect that. But he had nothing to do with the show, so. At all. So I don't even know how that would even like. I never even thought about that, but damn, high key. I don't know. Dan and Pinhead Larry. All right. I'm there to Dan. Time is up. Who are you calling Pinhead? Were they real people or were they just someone Sandy made up? Are they legendary outlaws she heard about, or someone she I'm dirty Dan. From the past? It's a hard question to answer because they're really only mentioned in this one episode. The best we get later on is the words Dirty Dan was here written in graffiti on the back of a gym. Or that's at least what I thought until I saw the season 11 episode, Shopping List, where SpongeBob and Sandy travel to a snowy mountain and we briefly see them pass by two graves labeled Dirty Dan. These niggas on some random ass. Okay. And, and Pinhead Larry. So we know they were definitely real people. Now, in the episode, Sandy seems kind of familiar with this area, and these are the exact same graves she recreated for SpongeBob and Patrick. So this seems to be implying that her dream was actually based off of a real memory of her fighting and killing Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry here. Except there's one problem with that. How did Dirty Dan write this graffiti if he's supposed to be dead? I mean, I, I know it's not like we see when this graffiti was written, but it- Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he could have wrote this during the time when they were going to war. Who knows? wasn't left on just any old random gym. It was written on the back of Larry the Lobster's gym. A gym that we saw Larry open in season nine. What you see before you is the culmination of my life. Wait, so it was Pinhead and Larry related to Larry the Lobster? Meaning this graffiti must have been written long after Sandy would have fought and killed Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. So how is this possible? How could Dirty Dan write this on Larry's gym if he's supposed to be dead? I think this means that the real Dirty Dan and probably also Pinhead Larry are not actually dead. They probably oh. faked their deaths and are alive somewhere in Bikini Bottom. But where, and more importantly, who are they? Oh. Wait a second. Why would Dirty Dan write that he was here at this specific gym, Larry's gym? You don't think Larry the Lobster could Is Pinhead be Larry? Pinhead Larry? 
That sounds stupid. <laughs> or does it? I mean, it would explain why Dirty Dan would risk exposing that he's still alive at a place Sandy probably frequents. Maybe he's leaving a message for his former criminal partner. Okay, okay, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Nah, what the hell? So, they're both named Larry. That's he true. He definitely could say he has a pin-shaped head. But I guess, Larry if you want to restate. Larry is friends with Sandy. That's and true. he definitely isn't a criminal. That's also right. true. Maybe we need to take a closer look at our lobster uh... friend. So, I rewatched every single appearance of Larry the Lobster in all 14 seasons of Spongebob. Damn. And here's what I learned. Larry cares a lot about staying in shape and working out. That's to true. To an obsessive degree. <gasps> My latissimus dorsi has gone flabby. What I'm the fuck? To a rowing machine. He also hates when anyone else is out of shape and will do anything in his power to help them get fit. Those poor people. Someone needs to whip them into shape. Looking out at this sea of flaccid muscles. Someone needs to whip them into shape. shape. I'm disgusted. Push it. <laughs> Push it. Apparently, he was also raised by these two old fish. But Wait, what? are way too old and unsightly for my beach. So polite. Just like we raised him. And to further confirm this, the same old lady fish later says this during the Alaskan bullworm incident. We should call my nephew. Sounds like she could definitely be referring to Larry here, so I do think they're supposed to be his aunt and uncle. We also know I he guess? loves protein shakes. Protein shakes saved my life, bro. He used to be a lifeguard, but recently fulfilled his lifelong dream of opening up a massive gym. The culmination I didn't even know he opened a gym. A place of my own where I can work out every day, any time I want. He's not the most complex character, and there's definitely nothing here to indicate that he's the former infamous outlaw Pinhead Larry. Except for one teeny tiny detail. Ah, uh, here about it's about to be a stretch. Episode the nitwitting. In this episode, we very briefly see Larry working out at his gym, but we can clearly see that it's he's not his drinking gym. a kelp shake. Wait, what? And that wouldn't mean anything to you unless you remembered the season four episode, Best Frenemies. In this episode, a new restaurant opens up selling something called a kelp shake. Ah, a new star on my block. Everyone's enjoying a delicious kelp shake. They pop up out of nowhere, and we never find out who was really running them. The kelp shakes have an initial bad taste, but they are extremely addictive. This tastes like a wet gym sack. Hey, this ain't half bad. This is amazing. Like, to the point where people basically get hooked on it like a drug. Crab. Hey, I need, I need some of that kelp shake. Well, we gotta get more. The kelp shake restaurant is later shut down, and the shakes are banned because apparently they have some kind of radioactive material in them. What's happening to me? It'll take decades to clean this hazardous material up. I sure feel sorry for whoever drank this. But... Then why does Larry have the same banned kelp shake eight seasons later? Oh. Maybe this is just a random throwaway Easter egg? I mean, we never see him with a kelp shake again. Just yeah. the generic. Maybe, maybe, shakes. maybe it was just one Except, of those bottles. Let's take a closer look at those. Nah, Larry, Larry just, Larry really a nigga for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just, take, it's like you go to the, like, you know, QT or whatever. You get a slush, you, em you drink, you empty it out, and then you reuse it. It's, maybe he just had a, maybe he just had a reusable. I mean, maybe he just washed out the kelp shake thingy and just reused it to put in pro put some protein in there. Protein shakes. In the season 11 you episode, Larry the Floor Manager, Larry briefly takes over as manager of the Krusty Krab and turns it into a gym. Now the healthy crab. Salad and protein power shakes. He forces SpongeBob to sell protein shakes, and even though the cups look different, the color of the liquid is the exact same as the kelp shake. They even seem to have the same initial bad taste. You like? No, Larry. No. I think every time no, Larry, Larry drinks or no. sells a kelp shake, he is actually selling the illegal, addictive kelp shakes from Best Frenemies. Uh. Now, we never see anyone grow any green hair, but knowing what we know about Larry, there's no way he would be drinking it himself if it had the same side effects. I think Larry was the one behind the original kelp shake restaurants, but after they were banned, he tweaked the recipe and started secretly reselling them as rebranded protein shakes. Mm. 
Mm. How else do you even explain Larry having the same kelp shake here eight seasons after they were banned unless he's the one making them? I in guess. Plus one, That's a stretch, but okay. that he's the one who makes his protein shakes. I just need to stop by the apartment and make myself a protein shake. This explains how a lifeguard could suddenly afford to open a massive gym. He's secretly a kelp shake drug lord kingpin. <laughs> what and the if fuck? you still don't believe me, we see Larry standing next to a protein shake store called Protein Fiend that has a green kelp logo and the word kelp shake on the sign, clearly referencing the kelp shakes. And this is also the episode with the Mrs. Puff newspaper, so you know the creators were like in a hiding lore mood. There are too many connections here for this to be a coincidence. Larry the Lobster is the criminal mastermind behind the kelp shakes. Oh. But does this also mean that he was the former infamous criminal yeah that that's Larry what i'm saying like how that faked his death well believe it or not larry the lobster has also had a near-death experience in his past in squid plus one larry mentions that the protein shakes saved his life you don't need that glop. Oh, I wouldn't call it glop. Protein shakes saved my life, bro. Like, what does that even mean? Okay, hear me out, hear me out. What if this is how he survived his death? Sandy killed him and his partner, but the radioactive properties of the kelp shakes brought him back to life. Protein shakes saved my life. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Maybe Larry found some spare radioactive material from the can i see this uh the bikini atoll test uh we seen random radioactive barrels just lying around before and we also seen them have life giving properties in season seven uh the monster who came to bikini bottom back to life Protein shakes save my life, bro. So, of course, Larry would continue to drink and sell these kelp shakes. They literally saved his life. Even if they're radioactive and illegal, to him, this is a way to help himself and everyone around him. I mean, I strong, guess? The thing we know he wants most of all. It explains why he gets so defensive when Squidward insults his protein shakes. I love protein shakes. <laughs> Bro, that was that was such an ignorant thing for that that man Squidward to do, bro. That was so ignorant, bro. Okay, okay, but there's still an. I mean, did not need to do that here. If Sandy killed Pinhead Larry, why doesn't she recognize him now? Well, I think we get a possible explanation to this CTE. in the Camp Coral spinoff episode, Game Night, where the camp what? counselors play a board game called Lobster Trap. If you take away the beard and the eye patch, the lobster on the box looks exactly like Larry. A direct clue about Larry the Lobster being a criminal. Just like that Flying Dutchman game, I think this game is based on the real legendary criminal Pinhead Larry. This explains why Sandy wouldn't recognize Larry the Lobster. Either this is a criminal disguise he wore, or, and I'm just speculating here, it's actually what he used to look like and the healing properties of the kelp shake fixed his eye. And if you're still I mean, not that's a reach about Larry's criminal connections, I've saved my best evidence for last. Yeah, let me see Remember that evidence, that brother. Old lady that yeah. raised Larry. So polite. We should call my nephew. She's just a sweet old lady. There, there's no way she would have right. raised a criminal mastermind, right? Well, in the season nine episode, Patrick Man, she is revealed to be none other than the Dirty Bubble. So are you telling me that the dirty bubble raised Larry the Lobster? Who does nigga think he is, Sakuna? I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, Ghetto? Like, what the hell? What is this even? What? 
Dirty bubble! This random old lady was actually one of the most notorious criminals in Bikini Bottom all along. That doesn't make any sense, though, because we've seen him... So... It, does he, like, have, like, a double life or something? Man Ray's partner in crime, the Dirty Bubble. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's arch nemesis, the Dirty Bubble. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe this is just a disguise he wore in this yeah, that's what I'm episode. saying. episode. It doesn't necessarily mean this old lady has always been the Dirty Bubble, but I checked everywhere, and I can confidently say that we have never seen the Dirty Bubble and this lady in the same scene. And she's a pretty common background character. Also, she lives in the same retirement home as the Dirty Bubble's nemesis, and we see her constantly in the background watching them. She is literally the perfect cover for the Dirty Damn. He not wrong. Not to mention the Dirty Bubble was able to do her same wait do her same usual old lady voice perfectly pretty bubble to spy on them but most damning of all this old lady is friends with and even went to high school with man ray why hello ray mabel i haven't seen you since high school wait what but man ray would know that that's the dirty bubble hello. Man Ray probably knows this is the dirty bubble, but he's playing along with the undercover role in public. But nobody's around to see them. They, there is no way they would know that there's anybody around to see him. So why would they need to pretend? Ray Man got, has got cake. I mean, you're not wrong. But this doesn't make any sense, though. He wasn't even aware that nobody was around to even see him. Why, do, why would he be pretending that? Why would he pretend that? I, oh, leave me alone. I mean, you said it. I'm just reciting what you said. Since high school, Larry the Lobster was raised by the Dirty Bubble. Wait. Wait, hold on. He knew since high school, Larry the Lobster was raised by. There's no evidence for it, but could this other guy have been Man Ray in disguise. I feel like, I mean, there is no evidence for this, but that'd be also a stretch. The Dirty Bubble, explaining how he became the infamous criminal known as Pinhead Larry. And wait a second, Pinhead Larry was raised by the Dirty Bubble? The only criminal we know in the show whose entire gimmick is being dirty. Uh, uh, holy sh- the Dirty Bubble is Dirty Dan. It fits too perfectly. This would also explain how Dirty Dan faked his death. The Dirty Bubble is constantly being killed and later- Okay, so the Dirty Bubble and Larry were- Were partners in crime, but also- f Aunt and nephew? I'm brought back to life with a bubble blower <laughs> the official spongebob youtube channel has a series called bikini bottom mysteries it that talks about that spun uh, talk about spongebob theories they're really fun videos but they learn a uh, they lean a little more towards uh parody than actual attempts of fan theories also just because something on the official youtube channel doesn't mean it's from the creators but they but they do have a great theory uh, that I highly recommend watching about the uh, Man Ray, or, or I guess MM and BB, uh, Mermaid Man, Barnacle Boy, are s secretly controlling the villains to make themselves look like heroes. Wait, what? So Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are faking being heroes? What the fuck? The Dirty Bubble and Larry the Lobster were the infamous criminal duo Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. After nearly being killed by Sandy, they changed their identities and split up. The Dirty Bubble continuing his criminal pursuits with his new partner Man Ray, and Larry the Lobster choosing a more subtle approach by secretly selling illegal kelp shakes. And even though they've been apart for years now, the Dirty Bubble still left a little reminder to his old partner, Dirty Dan was here.
yes, he certainly was. And that is the Pinhead Larry the Lobster Theory. And that mm. is the end of Alex Bale's SpongeBob Conspiracy. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Okay. Picture this. You're sitting Mother on your phone. Bro, put some clothes on this nigga, bruh. We want your banana.